study showing that vegans and vegetarian are more susceptible to broken bones, but let's dive beyond the headlines. What is missing from there? Is this accurate? Is there a big piece to the puzzle missing? Well, taking that deeper dive for us right now is Dr. Neil Barnard. Dr. Barnard, these headlines are all over the place, but what is the big piece of the puzzle that is missing from all of these conversations so far? Okay, well, first of all, it's a good study. Um, it's the Epic Oxford study, which is um, a large cohort of people who've been followed for a long period of time. And it was uh, published in BMC Medicine, which is a reputable journal. So it's all good stuff. And some of these are researchers that I've known personally for many years. So um, if you look at the data, it's true that vegans do seem to be a little bit more likely than say meat eaters to break a bone. Um, and so then the question is why? And the results, the reasons for that are really quite interesting. Um, the first reason, um, maybe a little bit of a surprise, vegans are less likely to be obese. Um, in this group, uh, this research cohort, the meat eaters were much more likely to be overweight and much more likely to be obese. If you've got a lot of body weight and you fall down, you are less likely to break a hip. If you are at a healthy weight and you fall down, you are more likely to break a hip. Now, this is not a good reason to gain weight, but we've known for a long time that heavy people are less likely to break a bone and it's people refer to it as just a cushioning effect. Um, it may be more than that. Body fat also makes estrogens and that could have an effect on bone integrity. So that's not, anyway, so, so you can perhaps set that part of it aside. Um, the other things though are also important. Some people in the vegan group were the non-vegetable eating ones, the ones who were missing their greens and so forth and not getting that much calcium. And so the average calcium in the group was a little under 600 milligrams a day. 600 milligrams a day would be about probably adequate, but maybe half the people were below that, the other half were above that. So you wanna be in the group that's above that. If you're not getting 600 milligrams a day of calcium, you really do need more. Uh, a couple other things though. In the study, the vegans were substantially more physically active. Um, if you are out riding your bike and rollerblading and things, you are more likely to break a bone. Um, it was, this cohort was uh, largely white women. Um, it was a European uh, cohort, uh, almost entirely white, mostly women. Um, whether those results would apply to others, less clear. And finally, the meat eaters were more likely uh, older women in this cohort were more likely to be using hormone replacement therapy compared to the vegans. The vegans tended to avoid it. The meat eaters tend to use it. Um, whether that's an issue or not, who knows? Um, so the, the bottom line is don't gain weight uh, to get a cushioning for your body in case you fall down. Um, the harm of that, the risks of that are much greater than the benefit. Um, but do get your calcium, and calcium means greens and beans, green leafy vegetables like kale and Brussels sprouts and collards and broccoli, uh, and the, bean, the whole bean group. All of those things should be part of your daily diet. And if you get plenty of calcium and do get physical activity and are at a healthy weight, you can, you can hopefully have the best health profile overall. You know, regardless of what diet it is that you're eating, uh, I believe that it is also a fact that there are so many Americans who are nutrient deficient, even if they are eating dairy, are eating meat here. So really, it just kind of goes to the the notion that you really should be eating that well-rounded diet that you were just discussing, in this case, plant-based. Yeah. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, put them all together. Don't forget your vitamin, vitamin B12. And let's say because it is just about December, let's have a word about vitamin D. Normally it comes from the sun. If it's cold, you might not be getting so much uh, sunlight and you might need a vitamin D uh, supplement. Most doctors would say about 2000 IUs a day. If you're not getting adequate vitamin D, it's harder for you to absorb the calcium that you're taking in.